Instead, use your freedom to serve others. So good morning. It's 6 a.m. Coffee with Shanda. Welcome, Instagram. Welcome, Facebook. Um, these will be running throughout the day. I'm excited to share with you what happened to me last night. So have you ever felt a calling to do something, but you're a little bit afraid to do it? Last night, and, and as people are getting on, I'll just say good morning, and then I'll get into this because we have so many people loading on on Facebook right now. Um, hundreds of people. Hi, good morning, good morning, good morning, DJ. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, you guys on Instagram. Say hi so I can say hello to you. Good morning, Alex Ariaga. Awesome. So, you guys, I want to talk to you about, have you ever, like, been stopped by God? I know, like, I'm not going to get religious on you, but I am going to get a little scripture on you. Have you ever been stopped by God where you're blessed enough that something is compelling you to step forward into some sort of a cause? Like, like who are my blessed people out there that you, like, can't stop yourself from doing something? Like, you're so blessed that you're obsessed about something that... Um, you can't stop yourself from moving forward. So I had this really vivid dream last night. I mean, this dream was crazy. I woke up remembering this dream. And what's funny about this dream is that for oh, probably about three years now, I have been feeling the calling. And the calling for me, well, let me tell you the dream first. I'll tell you the calling. And, and then I want you to see if you've had a moment like this. Because I can piece together all the moments that God has been trying to talk to me that I just have been ignoring or I've been making up a reason why I can't right now. First, it was like, I can't right now because I'm afraid for the safety of my child. I can't right now because it's, you know, I'm really busy going into an event or something, right? So Full transparency, obviously I deal with the same things you do. It's just how quickly can we overturn our limiting beliefs and move into a space of absolute service. So last night I had the most, this morning, I had the most disturbing dream ever. And I dreamt, I dreamt about being human trafficked, like I was being human trafficked. And I was trying to find a way of getting out of the moment by appealing to the man that was human traffic, like trafficking me. And this is all a dream, right? This is not something that happened, but it was so vivid, right? Like I remember him hitting me. I like, I can remember it. It was just this morning. I remember him raping me. I remember trying to get away. I remember my child being in the room and trying to protect my child. And then the dream went on where I was escaping. Right. And so my point in all of this is um, while I was in it, I was having while I was dreaming, I was having an outer body experience of somebody else experiencing this, like somebody else having a child and not being able to protect the child because somebody was hurting you or because you know what I mean? Like it was it was so horrific, but it wasn't horrific at the same time. Like I could actually be in the drama of the horrific story and, and I have an outer body experience that I was like, God keeps asking me to do something in human trafficking. And so here's the next thought that comes. I don't know if I want to put myself out there like that. I, 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 don't, I don't like, I mean, I've raised money for human trafficking um, at my zone event. We always make a difference at my zone event. I've given money personally. I promoted, I've done, a, it's not, I can't say I've done a lot. I, that's bullshit. I've not done a lot, right? Like I, I was telling Ash that um, this was not true, but there, there was um, there was a note that my nanny told me that a little girl in Solana Beach was grabbed from school, and I knew about it for 24 hours. Like I was, I was like, oh my god, that's horrible, right? Like now backdraft all the history that I keep feeling this calling to do something about human trafficking. Now my nanny tells me this little girl's grabbed from a school in Solana Beach. And I go, so I was like, that's horrible. I mean, what type of reaction is that? That's horrible. I mean, I'm an influencer. I have hundreds and thousands of people who follow me, right? And my email list is massive. And I have an incredible group of clients that would really, if it's something really meant something to me, they would get behind it. But for 24 hours, I did nothing. I did nothing. I didn't even think about doing anything. 
And then I went for a run 24 hours after I got this information. And while I was running, I started running back home quicker and I was crying. I was crying. And I thought to myself, how dare I not do something about this moment? And I stopped a police officer on the street, asked him, he dispatched, and actually that whole story was not true. The entire story was not true. There was no child that was grabbed from Solana Beach, but it was this aha moment of how much we still are desensitized to each other's pains or desensitized to when somebody's going through a hard time and that we don't look up and do something about it. You know, there was something in the Bible, this is where I'm gonna get scripture on you, so please know that I'm not getting religious on you, but I really do believe that scripture is a big important piece for us to understand, especially if you're only studying spirituality, you only get a piece of the story. You really need to understand the full law. So, and not the full law of spirituality, but of the Bible. It says, it says if you think you're too important to help someone, you're, you, are only look, you are only looking at yourself. You're not that important. So here's the other reverse version of that. If you think you're too busy to help somebody else because you're focused on your own harvest in life, then it actually says that your harvest will decay. It actually says that you will start losing money. If you're so busy with your own life and you can't look up to help somebody else, right, because you're too busy, and Come on, like, come on, a moment of honesty here. How many people have felt that moment? I have, right? Over the last probably four or five years of my life, I actually look for the moments I'm too busy and step into them. And my community will tell you that, my, my friends will tell you that. I help everywhere I see an opportunity for me to help. However, the human traffic thing, I haven't helped as much as I could, right? So I've helped. And this isn't a process of judging. This is a process of saying, like, don't beat yourself up about this, but actually wake yourself up like it is a blessing to give you guys it's a blessing if you are so compelled that when you fly out of bed in the morning and the keywords are fly out of bed you're not dragging yourself out of bed that is a component of being compelled that is a giving space it is not how do i figure out what makes me passionate that is a fucking taking place that is a taking place when you come at it for you, it is a taking place. If you want to open up to ridiculous abundance, if you want your companies to make millions and millions of dollars, come on, stop thinking just $5,000 a month. I used to think just $5,000 a month. Stop thinking $5,000 a month. Go over the top. It's going to take you not being too busy and giving. It's going to take you making a difference. So be careful and pay attention to your... Pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of the job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anybody else, for we are responsible for our own conduct. You will harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. Otherwise, if you only give to your friends, and if you give to your friends, that's great, right? But if you only give to the people you care about or the people you think are influencer or the people influential or the people that will give back to you because they're powerful. Sometimes I, I see this in masterminds. I'll see, there's somebody in my mastermind that like wants me to separate all the top financial people from the people who are just making it. And that person could be watching right now and I'm okay with that. That's not right. That's selfishness, right? What, what if, do you know that I belong to a mastermind that there's people that make hundreds of thousands of dollars and I still can give them good advice? In fact, I gave great advice to somebody that is a hundred million dollar company and they took the advice and called back for more, right? I've also given advice to company, two companies that are in the billion dollar sta status and then a couple of companies in the $500 million range. I also help people who are just getting started and have no idea what they're going to do. My point is, is that you are useful no matter how much money you make. And guess what? The people around you are useful no matter how much money they make. Open up, right? If you are only focused on your own harvest and sinful nature, that means that you are focusing on you, right? Here's the essence of focusing on you. You're frustrated. You're tired. Tired. Giving doesn't make you tired. It doesn't. I, I, I see, I mean, I see people like Sprite and some other people in the world and they're giving and they're not tired and they're 
like giving every essence of their human being and they're not tired, right? But it's an aspect, tiredness is an aspect of selfishness. Now that doesn't mean that you don't get tired or that you are tired and you're a bad person. That means that something in your thinking is draining you. So I wanna just skip this other part and I wanna to go to the part that I was talking about um, today and it's in Luke. And again, I'm not getting bible on you. I really am getting scripture on you. I'm not religious. I do go to a non-denominational Christian church, um, but that's because I like to study scripture and I like how clean it is over there. Okay, so it talks about this area where it's a parable in the Bible that it talks about when you're given money. So here, let me break some money, the money conversations in some of you guys. Have you ever looked at a rich person and thought, they're kind of snobby or like, I don't really want that much money. I've done that. I don't really want a billion dollars. What would I do with a billion dollars? I'm not that greedy. I'm not motivated by money. Um, I have somebody right now that we're going to break through to the seven figures and multiple seven figures. And uh, she comes from a spiritual context. And we helped her grow six figures in her first 10 months of working with us in our pace club. And she, um, she was like, I was like, okay, I'm opening up something called the 1% club, which is for people who want to be millionaires. And um, she said, oh, I really want to be a part of it, but I, I am finding a hard time claiming um, like I want a million dollars. And I'm like, claim a million dollars because of the influence you become as you make many millions of dollars, right? There's a group of people who will judge you because they're not about the money. If you ever say out loud that I don't want the money, then honestly, you are caught in a rift. You are caught in a riff because even if you got the money and gave all the money away to an incredible cause like human trafficking and you made a huge difference in the world, money does help. It helps. The only reason why you say that is because you're worried about maybe you can't do it or you're worried that somehow it'll be taken away from you. But listen to this. Money is given to three servants. Actually, money is given to 10 servants. Excuse me. I'm still learning. Money is given to 10 servants. And I'm not going to read the whole passage, but it says this king comes back. He's a hard king. Otherwise, he's a hard coach, right? He's a hard king. And he comes back and he says, the first servant reports, Master, I invested your money and made 10 times the original amount. He says, well done. The Well done. The king says, well done. You are a good servant. You have you have been faithful and and with little I entrusted you with. You governed. I'm going basically with. I trusted you with little and you tenfold it. I'm going to actually make you a governor and a leader over ten cities. Okay, this is a servant. So how many of you guys have been in a spot I have where it was so broke at her? Right, I was so broke at her. I mean nothing. Five hundred dollars. No idea I was going to pay my rent. I've been in that spot, right? Not allowed to work in America at the time. I've been in that spot. I'm Canadian. I'm an immigrant. Um, so, okay. So, so, so how do you go from like, like food stamps to six figures? Like one of our clients, like how do you go from your dad paying your bills or your parents living on your parents' couch to, and people do this in their twenties and thirties and fifties, right? To all of a sudden six figures and then seven figures. Well, you steward the money properly. You help people, right? You get paid for as many people as you help. The second servant says, reports, Master, I invested your money and made five times the original amount. The king says, well done. No competition here, you guys. No competition. Like, one servant's not better than the other, right? But one multiplied by ten, the other multiplied by five. He said, well done. You'll govern five cities. So you always reap what you sow, what you sow right? So the first one that... that multiplied the money by 10 now has influence over 10 cities. The one that multiplied the money by five now has influence over five cities. So money does bring influence. It does. It's one of the biggest reasons why I want to make more money is I want to have more influence in the world with my peers to get them to work together. Right? So then the next one says, um, but the third servant brought back only the original amount of money and said, master, I hid your money. I hid it. I hoarded it. I kept it safe. Right? This is that logical bullshit thinking that so many of our parents taught us. My mom still tells me to be careful. Be careful with my money and make sure I pay my taxes. I'm like, mom, 
my taxes every quarter or more than you make in a year. Like, of course I pay my taxes. But it's that mindset, right? It's that mindset of hoarding and fear and keeping and saving. And don't get me wrong, like, I know I'll say this. Saving is not a great idea. Moving money in flow is a great idea. I have no money sitting in idle. It is all moving, right? Whole nother conversation. If you're interested in knowing more about that, you can send me, you guys on Facebook, you can send me a private message in my inbox. It may take me a couple days to get to it, but I'll answer it. I was answering all of them yesterday. I cleared my inbox yesterday. Go send me a private message on, on Facebook in my inbox, and you're welcome to ask me a deeper question about money. Okay, so, so the third servant just literally brought back the original amount of money. They were afraid. So please don't be afraid of losing your money. Okay, don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of making it. Don't be afraid of money. All it is is a service tool and a measurement tool to see how many people you've helped. Put your focus on the generosity of giving to as many people as you can. Okay? Okay, so um, I hid your money and I kept it safe. I was afraid because you are a hard man to deal with. Taking what isn't yours, otherwise the, the king takes what isn't his and harvests crops, crops that he didn't plant. So otherwise, the king is not a great person is what they're saying, right? And he was afraid, so he didn't want to invest the money because what if he loses it? The, man, the, the king said, you're a wicked service, and the king roared. Your own words, so basically what happened in the story, I won't go through the whole scripture, but what happened in the story is that he took the money away, didn't give him another chance because he was so fearful with the money and he hid it and he tried to save every dollar instead of being generous, right? And so he took all the money that he gave to the servant that saved his money and gave it to the servants who had tenfold and fivefold his money. So this is that common uh, conversation that we have in the marketplace, which is the rich keep get, getting richer. And then we actually say that with some condescending way. Yes, the rich keep getting richer. Do you know why? Because they are responsible with the money. They risk big. They risk big. Start paying attention, right? And you might say, I've risked big and I've lost. Yes, so have I. So have I. But do you have faith? Do you have your mindset on something bigger, on a bigger plan than you? Do you have faith? Are you compelled to move forward, right? Like, are you compelled? My clients on a weekly basis have me in tears because of their success. Do I have clients not making it? Yes, my first program I ever launched, not one person got a result. That is a colossal failure. That is a failure. If I made anything up about myself in that moment and licked my wounds and told everybody how much of a loser I am, then I never would be a multimillionaire every year. You guys, I say this with importance. I don't just make, and I say this humbly, please, it's for the sake of proof. I don't just make a million dollars on social media or on like email lists or in my business online. I make it every single year and it grows every single year. And with it becomes massive fear. Meaning that right now, even going into the next version of what we're doing in personal development with our company for just entrepreneurs, I am launching a program to completely take out every emotional trigger that you have that is causing you to not build your business. I am launching a program that will stop those emotional triggers from taking you down. If you're interested, go inbox message me and tell me that. But my point is, is am I scared? Of course. It's another thing I'm giving. It's another thing that I'm putting out there that I can be criticized on and beaten up around. But when you put your focus towards making the difference. Where's the hole in your marketplace that nobody's feeling better than you, right? Like I see work out there and nobody's going to fill it better than me because I see the holes and I'm going to do something about the holes, right? So my point in sharing that with you is what are you feeling compelled to do and what are you being asked to do? And have you slowed down to just be with God, be with the Holy Spirit and allow that calling to come forth 
and it may come forth in one sitting, or you may be trying too hard to get the answer, and you may be talking too loud in your head, and you just need to maybe go out for a run, and on the run, talk to the Holy Spirit. There's something that happens when you physically move your body that you distract your mind. And often, you know, you're able to hear. But when you hear it, then know that you might feel very inspired. I hear this all the time. Shanda, I figured it out. I'm compelled to do this thing. And then things get hard. Money runs out. Time gets scarce. And you get back in that rift of scarcity, of you don't have time to give. And then what happens is you lose your passion, right? All of a sudden, that thing you thought you wanted is not there anymore. And then even somebody you share that with can start influencing your mind and have you second guess that thing that you want to do. And now you find yourself way over here and years later, we'll have a conversation as this comes back up and the Holy Spirit is trying to birth this thing called your life to you. And this thing called your life is meant to give back to other people in an area that you see a gap and a hole that you know that you can make a bigger difference for and you have to have the courage to do it, which means typically you cannot rely on your own willpower. That's why if you're in a great community, stay in it, right? If you're not in a great community or you're attracted to someone that you feel that can help you coach you get there, go to that coach and it doesn't have to be me. I share the space with a lot of powerful, amazing people. But get yourself into a community and stay there and work it out for many, many, many years. So the last piece I wanna just share with you is that it's good, I think it's good for you to share your calling with other people. And there's mixed reviews about this in the marketplace. There's something that tends to hold us accountable if we share it with people. The thing is, is that if you're not mentally strong enough to commit to it all the way, Tony Robbins always says, put as much pain behind you as possible so you won't turn back. For me, often that pain is talking about things publicly. If I talk about things publicly, I tend to do them because I don't want egg on my face that I don't do them. You are my accountability factor. Right? So this is why I tend to like to share things publicly. But if you're someone who gets talked out of things very quickly, I would recommend that you go ground with a really strong mentor or leader that will help you really grow your belief system on why you're compelled to do what you're doing. So thanks, you guys. I hear a couple of you guys are making comments. I appreciate that. Um, you guys on Instagram, I love having you here. It is Friday while we're currently cutting this. Um, so with that being said, I won't be back until Monday morning. Um, next Tuesday, I will have my friend Bedros Kaluni on. He owns Fit Body Boot Camp. Will not be on Instagram, guys, because I'm interviewing him. It'll be on the Heartcore, Heartcore being one word, business page. Um, and then if you're interested uh, in knowing more about who I am and what I do, you can go into the, the description area of the Coffee with Shanda at the top. And you can read a little bit more about why I do Coffee with Shanda and other ways that you can get information from me to help you grow your businesses, which is what I help people do. All right, you guys, God bless. Um, may you have a very, very powerful day. And whatever is calling you forth, may you have the community around you to hold you accountable and the courage to step into it long term. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.